Good morning, everybody. Um, uh, Kirsten, can you hear me? I can. Great. So, everybody, just uh, welcoming everybody back to uh, today's uh, presentation, which will be given by Kristen Hossman. She's an MVP in the USA, and today she'll be talking about use tax. Uh, my name is David Singleton, and uh, I need to click a few buttons. Uh, and I'll be your moderator today. Uh, this is our 63rd uh, seminar, so it's been uh, quite a lot and it's growing constantly. And as I said, Kristen, in a moment, she'll give her own uh, um, uh, introduction in a moment. So just a few things. Your microphone's muted and we can't unmute them. Uh, if you have a question, please type it into the question box. Uh, search around, you'll find it. Not the chat, but the question box. If you need to chat directly to me, you can, but put a question in the question box. Uh, if it's something that's uh, important for, for Kristen, I will interrupt her to let her know there's a question. If something happens, the sound dies, technical or a specific question. Otherwise, all questions will be addressed at the uh, end of the um, uh, webinar by me. I uh, just want to remind everybody that our webinars are all published on the Ariopa webinar site uh, and they will be then posted uh, through YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with all of the um, the seminars that are happening, then uh, grab this URL, which you should have because it's how you found this anyway, and you'll find out when the next sessions are uh, happening. I'll mention at the end uh, the ne the upcoming when um, Kristen's finished, but we do have, as you all know, we have uh, generally two a month, uh, sometimes a bit less depending on timing and how it all goes. And remember, we're always looking for more people. At the end, I'll give a thank you to 4NAV, who are our sponsors today. But for now, I'm going to um, try if I can get the screen button to hand over to uh, Kristen. And Kristen, you should now have control. All right. Well, thank you so much for the brief introduction. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, thank you, first off, to everyone in, in Europe that's joining. I'm in the United States, so where I'm at, it's actually 8 a.m. in the morning here. So I'll try and be lively uh, for you all so I don't bore you along the way. But thank you for being here. Um, we're going to be talking about setting up and processing sales and use tax in BC. Uh, let's get started here with just a, a little bit of an introduction of myself. I'm Kristen Hossman, located just outside of Denver, Colorado. I'm a Microsoft MVP for business applications, and I, I um, specialize in Business Central. And for those of you who uh, may not be aware, there's actually only 40 BC MVPs worldwide right now. So not very many overall. Um, but we do know the product is, is kind of skyrocketing here, so I'm sure that that number is going to increase over the next few years. I also am an advisory committee member for Doug. So if you've never heard of Dynamics User Group, they're the ones that put on the Dynamics Con virtual event, which is free, and that is kicking off the middle of next week. So if you haven't registered for that free conference yet, um, you can just uh, do a search for Dynamics Con Virtual and hopefully that'll get you there. If you need to contact me in any way, um, you can just search me on my link tree there as well. But let's get started here. So today we're gonna be talking about sales tax and also use tax. And I just wanna put a disclaimer here that um, if you're in the United States, I'm not a CPA. Um, everything that I'm talking about today is just strictly on how you can set up the system to make sales tax work for you. Uh, but this is not by any means any sort of tax, tax advice. So you would need to go to your CPA or your tax accountant uh, for any type of those questions that you have. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, let's start talking about the two major steps to setting up sales tax and use tax in Business Central. It's actually really simple. So the first thing we need to understand is um, what the tax jurisdiction is. And then the second is gonna be, what is the tax area? Okay, so a tax jurisdiction is going to be something that you're seeing on the screen here. 
So in this scenario, I've looked up a zip code 80470 and the tax jurisdiction breakdown for 2022 is being shown. So we have the state of Colorado, we have the county of Jefferson, the RTD Greater Denver, that is a special tax for the buses that run between Denver and then um, up in the mountains. And then the scientific and cultural one, again, is gonna be a special tax. So if you're in the United States, um, some other special taxes could be stadium tax. Um, there's a lot of big cities in the, in the US that put a special tax if they're building like a new football stadium or a soccer stadium, something like that. So it's really important to understand what those tax jurisdictions are. And also that um, this is a pretty manual process, right? If you're gonna be managing sales tax uh, for your company, you have to really be on and watching, you know, when does it change? How often does it change? Um, making sure that it's it's correct in the system if, if something is added. So it's a pretty manual process. Uh, there are companies, ISVs within the United States that also specialize in this. So if you're a bigger organization and you have Nexus and a lot of states in the US, Maybe you don't want to manage this in-house anymore. Uh, you could go to one of those uh, companies and they have a plug into BC that can actually help you automate this process, okay? So today we're gonna to be doing the manual setup. We're not gonna be looking at any of that automation, but basically everything that I'm showing you today, if you went the route of it being, being automated, um, it would take out a lot of the work as you could see, okay? Um, and then the source here is below, if you're interested, um, Avalara does have a pretty good website that you can download a lot of the tax jurisdictions and, and um, percentages as well. So if you do need to find some of that information, that's a good website. So let's jump into the system because I do intend this to be a very hands-on kind of show and tell type presentation. So, I've given you kind of the background here as far as what a tax jurisdiction is. I haven't really talked about a tax area yet, but I think what you're gonna find once we get in here is it's gonna make a lot more sense. So let's go ahead and open up Business Central. And just a disclaimer here, I am using a preview version 2022, or preview version 22, uh, BC uh, environment as well. So I've tested it, everything seems to be working as, as expected, but in case we find something goofy, this is the preview. So let's go ahead and get started. So the, the last screenshot I showed you, if you recall, is on tax jurisdictions versus tax areas. The first thing that we're gonna do in the system is we're gonna go ahead and set up some tax jurisdictions because that's really the first thing that needs to be completed in the system in this scenario. So you can just come up to uh, your little global search here and I'm gonna type in tax jurisdictions. And then since we're gonna be using this uh, throughout the webinar, I'm just gonna go ahead and book it so I don't have to search for it next time, okay? So there's a lot of things that ship out of the box if you were to um, look at like the Kronos company, something like that, you're gonna see a lot of things in here. And <clears throat> what's important to understand here is that these are all jurisdictions. So these are all unique areas in, in where you need to collect sales tax for, okay? So when you're setting up a new one, the easiest thing to do is gonna be coming up to this new button right here. And in this scenario, I'm gonna set up what we were just looking at on that other screen, okay? So just to give you a refresher, we have Colorado, Jefferson, the RTD, and then the scientific and cultural, okay? So I'm gonna be setting up four. I'm gonna start with Colorado because that's the state tax that's happening. And over in the report to jurisdiction, I'm gonna put CO in here because that's the report to jurisdiction that this this sales tax or use tax needs to be reported to, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and click new again. And the next one is gonna be Jeffco. And that's just what we call Jefferson County here. 
that also is being reported to Colorado. And then the third one was the RTD one. It's early in the morning, I'm having an issue here <laughs> typing, please forgive me. Let's see, Greater Denver, there we go. And again, the report to jurisdiction on all of these, I'm putting, I'm putting Colorado because these are all, um, these are all jurisdictions within Colorado, okay? So if you're doing another state, you're just gonna make sure that they all actually have the same report to jurisdiction. And another thing that I will say is that one of my recommendations here is that this code um, corresponds with how you file to the state. So for example, when I file to Colorado State, there may be a scenario or, a, you know, some states actually give each jurisdiction a code. It could be a number, it could be, um, it could be alphanumeric, anything like that, right? Um, but if, if the state that you're reporting to does have specific codes per jurisdiction, it is my recommendation that the code here match it. And the reason for that is when you go to file for uh, sales tax filing, you're going to be able to easily match up at that point what you've collected to, to where it needs to go in, in the states. Because, you know, in the U.S., you go to file for all these states and um, usually it's a manual process. They give you a form, they list out all the jurisdictions and you have to tell them what your total sales is, what you've collected, what was exempt and so forth. <clears throat> so if you can put those codes in there right away, it is gonna help you along the way. All right, so we have our jurisdiction set up here at, at really almost like a high level, okay? And the reason I say a high level is because we still need to go ahead and put in our percentages, okay? So what we're gonna do now is I'm going to go ahead and select, we're gonna start, we'll start with, uh, we'll start with Colorado, how about that? Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on Colorado and then I'm gonna click details. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna open up the tax details window. And from here, I need to tell the system that for each specific tax group, okay, so for each specific tax group, what is the sales tax for that specific tax group, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead here and get this in here. And then every time I update something on these lines, I, I do need to, to go ahead and let the system know that I'm okay with updating that. Okay, so here we have all of our different tax group codes assigned to the tax jurisdiction, um, Colorado. Now the tax below minimum in this scenario, if we go back to our screenshot, is we're gonna see that it's 2.9%. So I'm gonna go ahead and put 2.9% in here for all the lines that should be taxable or all the tax group codes that should be taxable. Now, the one that says non-taxable, we're gonna leave zero, okay? Um, maximum amount or quantity, tax above maximums, none of these are applicable in this case in the state of Colorado, but I'm gonna assume that, you know, maybe there are some states where tax could be calculated differently based on, you know, different, different amounts or, or things like that. But in today's scenarios, we're just gonna leave those blank. And then also we have the expense and capitalize over here. So um, this is gonna spec specify if you want to uh, tax any expenses or capitalize um, items. So again, doesn't really pertain, pertain to what we're doing today. So we're just gonna go ahead and keep those blank as well. So we got Colorado done. Let's just jump in and do the same thing here for Jefferson County. So give me a moment. Give me a moment to get that done as well. So again, I'm just coming in here and I'm adding my tax group codes. So we wanna make sure that they're all in here. So if you ever add any new tax group codes, you do wanna circle back into your tax jurisdictions and make sure to add that in here. Otherwise, when you go to do 
to do a sale or to do use tax, you are going to have an issue with it not calculating if it's not included. So again, this really is a manual process overall, um, as you can see. This needs to be done manually. This is one of the tables that you can also upload to using a configuration package, or you can also use, um, or you can also use edit in Excel, or you can simply just copy paste into this window as well. So keep that in mind that there are some quicker ways to get the data into the system. Okay, we got our last one going in here. Just make sure that I get these in here correctly. So give me a moment to finish this one up. And then I do want to talk a little bit about use tax as well before I close this window. So use tax is going to be a scenario where you purchase goods and you need to pay sales tax on them. Okay, so in the United States, for example, uh, you may be a manufacturer and anytime you order goods that pertain to raw material that go into a finished product, those are obviously going to be tax exempt in most states. But there may be a scenario where you order something that you need to pay use tax on. So you need to pay tax on. So you notice here that I have the tax type set to sales and use tax on everything. And that's just default out of the box. I didn't have to change any, that at any point in time. Um, there's also excise tax. So that would be for an example, you're ordering maybe um, something from overseas, manufacturing wise to resell and there's an excise tax um, that needs to get calculated on that. For example, I used to work for a manufacturing uh, company and for a long time the tourniquets that we would get from overseas we had to pay an excise tax on those so we did have excise tax um, set up against those specific items and then when they came in it would actually calculate and tell me how much I needed to go ahead and pay the government uh, we also have sales tax only or use tax only <clears throat> so think about what your business is actually uh, needing as far as sales or use tax, and then that right there is going to be uh, where you set that up as. All right. So we got all of those set up, which is good. Now the next thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to decide what uh, what tax area needs to be set up. Okay. So in this example, we've set up four different tax jurisdictions. And all of these tax jurisdictions, if you recall right, are related to, to zip code 80470, okay? So in that scenario, anytime I ship product to a customer in zip code 80470, I want to be able to um, easily tell that all of those four jurisdictions kind of go with, with that, uh, with that specific uh, tax area. So we have the jurisdiction set up. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my global search and I'm gonna look for tax areas. And here, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new area. And for me, it makes logical sense to put the zip code somewhere in there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call this Conifer, Colorado, because that zip code pertains to Con Conifer, Colorado. And then down here in the line section, I'm going to go ahead and select all of those different jurisdictions. Okay, so give me a moment to find them all since they're kind of in a weird, weirder order than they were before. They're going to be alphabetical, so it's just going to take me a moment to find these. Um, I think these are it. Okay. So we have our jurisdictions here assigned to our tax area. So now what's gonna happen is anytime I assign a customer or a vendor to this specific tax area, they're gonna be charged the sales tax pertaining to all four of these jurisdictions, okay? Now, if, if your state that you have Nexus in has a rule on how the calculation needs to be done, 
You can also um, number these in order of uh, significance to that state. So for example, if the state says Colorado always needs to be done, you know, first, and then you can look at the county and then special, you know, is last or something like that, you could utilize that calculation in order. But again, for the scenarios I'm giving you today, we don't have any of those special rules uh, that pertain to Colorado. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and um, move on to the next step since we have our tax area completed. And the next step is going to be assigning these to customers and vendors, okay? So if I come over to my customer list, I can see here that I have a customer set up and I'm gonna go ahead and open that customer list. And I can see that the zip code is the same for that specific customer. So this is maybe where edit an Excel or like a configuration package could be really helpful for you to assign these in mass. But since we're just doing one customer, you can see what needs to be completed. So down in the invoicing section, we do have a tax area code. I'm gonna go ahead here and I'm gonna put the 80470. And what that's doing is it's assigning that tax area to this customer, okay? Now, this customer right now is not going to be charged sales tax because the tax liable toggle is turned off. But I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on because I know that I need to be charging that customer sales tax, okay? So we got that turned on. The next thing that's really important is to make sure at an item level that you actually have your, um, <clears throat> your tax group code populated, okay? So down within uh, the cost and posting and then the posting details section, there's a tax group code here. And if you recall, these, these tax group codes for what we just assigned at the jurisdiction level, and we gave them a percentage. So at an item level, you know, if this is blank, then obviously sales tax is not going to be calculated on it. So this is just one of those setup things that you want to make sure is completed as well. All right, going back to the home screen, we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna jump right to a sales invoice and we're gonna select that specific customer that we just assigned that tax area to, okay? So this customer came to us and they are ordering the Athens desk. You know, you put your quantity in and then as soon as it refreshes here, you can see that the total tax down here is now at $90.07. So that's telling me that it's pulling um, the sales tax based on that tax area code. So we can see here up in the line section, the tax area code is populated, okay? If I take the tax area code out, then it's going to go back to $0. Okay, so there's a little bit of logic there and a little bit of setup that needs to happen to make this all work proper, okay? So we see our sales taxes on there. I'm gonna go ahead and post this. Let me go ahead and say yes. And we don't need to see the posted invoice, so I'm gonna go ahead and say no. But let's kind of let's kind of um, turn gears a little bit. And we've talked about sales tax a lot here and, and how to get that on a sales invoice or order. But let's talk about use tax now, okay? So I have uh, the tax area code set up. I'm gonna go to my vendors list and we're gonna go to, let's just say subcontractor is my vendor. So on the vendor side as well, there is the tax liable, and there's also the tax area code. Now, in this scenario, uh, maybe this vendor is one of those vendors where, you know, sometimes it could be tax exempt, and sometimes I, it could be that I want to actually accrue um, use tax, right? So, depending on, you know, what the majority is, is what I would say, you know, you need to have tax liable checked on or off for. Let's go ahead and turn it off. So in this scenario, I'm saying, you know what, 99% of the time it's gonna be tax exempt, okay? And we already have a tax area code here of Atlanta, Georgia. So we're gonna leave that one there as well, 
But let's go ahead and create a purchase invoice and let's see what happens uh, when I don't have that tax liable button toggled on. We're gonna go ahead and select subcontractor. Let me go ahead and just put an invoice date in here. We're gonna select Athens desk and we're ordering five of them. Okay, so the tax area code came over at Atlanta, Georgia, but we can see that the total tax is zero dollars. Okay, if I scroll down, the tax liable is turned off. And again, for those of you on Business Central, by, by now you know that that's coming from the vendor card, right? If I go ahead and turn that on, it's gonna tell me you have modified tax liability. Do you wanna update the lines? Yes, we do want to update the lines, okay? As soon as I do that, now it is calculating sales tax, okay? One of the problems here, though, is that the use tax button is not checked. The use tax button is what tells me that I'm not actually paying sales tax to the vendor, that I'm actually accruing it to pay the state when I go and file, okay? So in that, in this scenario, that's what's happening. So this use tax button is not here out of the box. You actually have to come up and personalize your screen and add the field manually, okay? So um, again, if you personalize, that is going to be a user personalization. So whatever you do to your window at this point is just gonna affect the user logged in. If all of your users need this updated in mass, then I would say go ahead and personalize it at more of a profile role level so that it affects everybody. Uh, but all I did here is I clicked in the line section. I found use tax over here in the add field to page and I dragged, um, drag and drop it right over here, okay? So that's how I got that over there. Now, once that's over there, it allows me to check it. And again, all this is doing is it's telling me as an accountant that I am not paying the vendor the sales tax, okay? They invoiced me um, for $4,137, but I need to accrue use tax, okay? So that's what it's telling me. Now let's go ahead and post this. <clears throat> and let's go look at some of these reports. Okay, so we've gone ahead, we've talked about how to set up tax jurisdictions, assign them a tax area, how do we assign that at a customer vendor level, you know, what's important at an item level. So, so we've been running, you know, weeks now, right? And let's say it's the end of the month and we need to now um, go ahead and report to the state our sales tax. Okay, now keep in mind, some states you need to report monthly, some states are quarterly, some states are yearly. This is going to be strictly based on, you know, your, your agreement, your volume, different things like that with the state. Okay, so we're going to come up to the global search and what I'm looking for here, if I start typing in sales tax, <clears throat> there's a few different reports that pull up. Okay. The one that I'm really interested in today is going to be the sales tax collected. Okay, this is going to be the report where I can tell the system, do I want it at a summary level, normal level, or detail level? Well, let's go ahead and do it as a detail for this example. I want it to include sales tax and I want it to include use tax. Okay, I'm going to exclude the purchases because that would be in a scenario where I'm paying sales tax to a vendor and um, I'm not accruing use tax. So that last purchase invoice example where um, it was calculating sales tax and then I checked that little box saying um, use tax, that's where that would pertain to. If I wanna run the report for a specific code or a specific report to jurisdiction, I can also filter that way. And then, um, you know, you always wanna filter by a date. So if, if you're um, reporting for a month, you'd wanna put a range in there from start to end date. In this scenario, we'll just use today's date. Let me go ahead and preview this and talk a little bit about what this report um, is telling us. Okay, so let me go ahead and zoom in. So maybe a little too much. There we go. <clears throat> so it, it's telling us at the top where we are. So we're starting with the report to jurisdiction Colorado. 
Now, I did not filter it by um, by jurisdiction or anything like that. I've left it blank, right? So it's going to give it to us in alphabetical order. Uh, so the tax to uh, jurisdiction Colorado, we have a sale. Whoops, we have a sale on 36. Here's our invoice number right here. And it's also going to tell us taxable sales amount. So the amount sold was $2,001.60 and the amount collected uh, was $58.05. Okay, so when we go to file to the state of Colorado and they say, what are your total sales? Well, our total sales is $2,001 and we collected $58. Okay, we have the use tax uh, label over here as well, whether it was used tax or not. So that also uh, could be applicable when you go to file as well. <clears throat> the next one down here is Jefferson County. So now we have we have all of the jurisdictions kind of in a row here based on alpha, alphabetical order. Okay, so same thing that we're seeing here. So when we go to file for Colorado, we know that we need to report 2,000 in sales to Jefferson, $10 in sales tax. Um, the RTD, remember that bus, that special tax, same thing, okay? So when we file to the state, they know exactly um, the jurisdictions we collected and for how much, okay? Now, if I scroll down here, now we go to a different state. Now the report to jurisdiction is Florida. And we can see that we didn't have any sales or use tax or anything like that for the state of Florida. So um, that's gonna be blank. And then now we get down to the state of Georgia, okay? So this is my use tax one. Remember my vendor had Atlanta, Georgia set up. So we can see here that we have two separate purchase invoices. Uh, they both were use tax applicable. So in this scenario, this is money that um, we owe the state of Georgia and the jurisdictions of Georgia, um, the sales tax, because what happened in this scenario is the vendor invoiced us and they did not include sales tax on there. So in that scenario, they may not have nexus in, we'll say Colorado, they shipped the product to Colorado. They may not have nexus in Colorado, therefore they did not charge us sales tax automatically, but we know that we need to pay sales tax on it. So that's called use tax um, in the US. Okay, um, so there we have that. We owe the state of Georgia uh, $482. And then kind of keep going down. We also have Illinois where just like Florida, we did not collect anything. And then we have, oh, looks like we have Minnesota on here as well. We had a sale to a customer in Minnesota and um, we collected sales tax from that specific customer and that needs to get reported as well. So again, here, just kind of looking at this, this tax jurisdiction code 559, and then there's a tax jurisdiction code of Minnesota. So this goes back to what I was talking about early on when you set up the tax jurisdictions. If you know specific codes that the states assign to the jurisdictions, it is super helpful if you label it that in the system because whoever is going to file your sales tax is, it's just gonna make their job a lot easier. Um, in that scenario. So make sure that you go ahead and put that in there. All right, so that's the report. And to be honest with you, there's not really much more uh, that I need to discuss when it comes to setting up sales jurisdictions and or um, tax areas in the system. So I do have a blog out there on, on my blog site, and this is the URL. <clears throat> Everything that we covered today is on that blog, okay? So same order that we covered it in today's broadcast, um, you're going to find it out there on that specific blog. So use that as a resource use the recording as a resource as well but one of the things that i would highly recommend 
if you are not using um, tax jurisdictions and or um, you know use tax sales tax in the system today is make sure to set it up first in a test company whether that's in your production environment or in a sandbox environment doesn't really matter but just make sure that you are setting up a couple scenarios in a test um, company so that you can run through the scenarios and you can get comfortable and make sure that it's working uh, the way you need it to work. You want it set up proper the first time. Otherwise, it's going to cause a lot of issues when you go to file to the states. And then um, also, if you ever get audited in, in the United States, a lot of states uh, will audit your sales tax periodically. So you want to make sure that it's set up proper uh, the first time as well. So that concludes my presentation. And I think we have a little bit of time here left for questions. So if you have any questions, go ahead and put that into the questions area on the call and we can get those addressed. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Kristen. Uh, we don't actually have any questions. Um, been quite quiet, I think, because of the time zones that the, we don't have a lot of people from the US uh, right in here right now. Um, I just have a, one, one note I was going to mention is that uh, maybe it's important that people remember that when you're setting up in BC, uh, setting up your customers, if you're using ship to addresses, it's very important that you set up sales tax in the ship to because it will overwrite your um, override the uh, the normal customer settings, and you can end up um, getting your tax mixed up if you don't set, do your, your ship to. Just another little point about that. But um, yeah, that was great. Good, good presentation. It was very clear, very fast, and I think uh, it's going to take a, a second read of the uh, uh, watch of the video to keep up with it. it was really an excellent pace you were going on there. So um, yeah, I, I think that's it. I'm just waiting to see because sometimes we get some people putting some last minute questions. But uh, we've got a thank you from uh, Brad. Thanks, Brad. Uh, that's appreciated. It's always nice to get some uh, kind words out there. But yeah, it does look like we are uh, in there and, and going. So um, if that's all, have you, I see you um, setting, showing the, the tax uh, tax area and the set up in the, the ship too. Uh, if you're finished, Kristen, I'll take back control of the screen. Is that okay? Yes, go ahead. Thank you. Great. Okay, so let me just bring this back. I just want to, um, do the normal situation of uh, just reminding everybody again that uh, we do have some more <laughs> seminars coming up. Uh, we will have um, some regex. That one's very interesting for me. That, and as I think you, um, you know, David and he knows his stuff, so it'll be quite interesting. And we've got Christoph doing another presentation, which he hasn't done for a while, but he's um, always very popular. So that's going to be uh, the two sessions that you've got on the screen there. Most importantly, we would um, like to remember that we do need new presenters. And what's really important is that obviously uh, Kristen's very experienced. This is not your first presentation, very clearly, very professional, and you know exactly what you're doing. But this is also a great, um, a, a really great opportunity for people that are new uh, and want to get a, a chance to get a, in a more casual environment, would like to do a presentation. Uh, really happy that you came in, Kristen. It's really nice to have uh, the you know, veterans that have actually been doing a lot of presentations. And uh, we'd like people not to be shy and to come forward and give us more uh, presentations at any time. And, uh, of course, the most important thing comes down to 4NAV, who are our sponsor of this session. They're the ones that provide all the technology, do all of the recordings behind it, keep all of the, all of the websites all paid for, sorted, and running. And uh, thank you very much to uh, 4NAV. So thanks very much, everybody. Uh, whoa, my screen bench. Thank you, uh, everybody. That's been uh, really good. And uh, I would uh, say, uh, yeah, Peter, thank you. Yeah, it was very, very interesting. It was a great little presentation. Thanks for your comments. So uh, that's all. I'm going to stop the presentation now. And thank you, everybody. <laughs>